Welcome to the Felt Studio. I'm Wendy Bailey and today I'm going to show you how to make a really beautiful little felt pod. So it's felt in three dimensions and it will get you started on a very exciting journey, I hope. Thank you for joining us. Here is what you'll need to make a three dimensional felt pod. You'll need some water in a container, cool, not hot, a plastic bag, just a recycled bag, a towel, a bar of either olive oil soap or vegetable oil soap, a piece of plastic that you can use for a template. Sometimes I use bubble wrap, other times I'll use some recycled plastic. You can often get it from white goods stores. A pair of sharp scissors with a sharp point, a balloon is very handy, some tulle netting, just a piece big enough to cover your template. You can make your template any size. The tulle netting is scratchy and cheap, it's just ballet tulle. Bubble wrap with the bubbles up on top of the table. Some 18 micron wool. Uh, you only need about 20 grams to make a small pod. I've also got some silk fiber, some linen fiber, and some threads. The threads I don't actually use in the video, but you can pop some nice fine threads of cotton or wool or rayon on the surface and it gives a beautiful texture. Sometimes it's good to put a towel underneath your, your whole piece of work as well. It just stops any dribbles going on the floor. The first thing you're going to do is pull out the wool tops. And you just use the end of the wool top, the last centimetre, and you try not to put your finger on top of the wool top. So just hold it like a bunch of flowers and pull with your dominant hand very fine layers of wool. And you're going to pop them in a shingle pattern so you want the whole template to be completely covered with wool and not to have any gaps or spaces. You want it to hang over the edge of the template about a centimetre. You make it nice and tidy. The second layer of wool tops is laid perpendicular to the first, so in an opposite direction. So again, just pulling on that last centimetre of wool and placing it over the top of that first layer in the opposite direction. Just wanting to make sure there's no spaces and make sure that you're only pulling on that last centimetre. That makes sure that the wool's nice and fine. Give it a little pat down and pop your net on the surface. Next you're going to get your bar of soap and swish it around in the water just until the water is soapy. You don't want it to be milky or very, very soapy. You just want tiny little bubbles when you swish your fingers. You can see what it looks like there. The soap just allows the water to absorb into the wool more easily. It makes it a little bit more alkaline and opens the scales of the wool. So just patting with a, a recycled plastic bag, not rubbing too much, just patting those soapy bits of water through. Then you just blot the excess water from the surface. That makes it easy to remove the net and it also makes sure that you don't get lots of puddles of water on the floor. You're going to turn it over and then pull those woolly edges around the template. So the whole template is going to be enclosed in wool. I give it a little rub with my hand. If you've got any pleats, you give them a little rub so that they just become a little gather instead. You're going to add more wool on the second side. So the wool on this side doesn't have to overlap the edge. It's just covering up the part that's white that you can see there. So that's just covering up. We're just going in one direction and keeping it within the template this time. Wet hands and wool don't go so well together, so try and dry your hands off. So you can see that's completely covered. And then you're going to do the second layer at right angles, only pulling on the last centimetre. Again, just make it neat and tidy, net over and wet as you did before with the recycled plastic bag. The patting just allows the water to work its way right through the two layers of wool that you've laid down. And 
and then blot as usual. If you try and take the net off without blotting, it's a little bit harder, but it does work. Okay, those fibres that are hanging over, we need to pull round to the other side. As you can see, it's completely covered in wool now. Again, dry your fingers off. And another two layers, just the same as the two layers you just did. Again, pulling those fibres round to the other side and filling in the centre. Making sure there's no pleats. And then you do that a third time. So in the end you've got six layers on each side of your pod. This makes a nice firm pod that will hold its own shape. It really does need those six layers. And on the last layer, you give a little bit of an extra rub with the soap. Tidy up those edges. Make sure that the edges are pulled tight onto the template. Give the edges a smooth. And then you can pop some layers of wall colour in a pattern because this is going to be the outside of your pod. Dipping those bits of wool into the water can give a nice effect and give nice straight lines or swirls or whatever pattern you'd like to put on. It's also important to put that pattern from one side to the other so that it's not just suit two sides of the pod, you actually want it to look like it's in the round. You don't want it to look two-sided. So you try and take those patterns to the other side of the pod. And this is the fun part. So you're just playing with the colours, playing with the lines. You could do spots, you could do stripes, you could do whatever you wanted. I'm, I really like swirly swirly spirals so it's always a nice thing to put on a pod for me. Pull those edges around. Again you're keeping everything nice and neat and tidy. This is some silk fibre. Silk fibre gives a nice shine to the surface of your pod and an interesting texture. It is a little bit hard to work with if your hands are wet so try and keep them dry. And the black fibre is linen fibre. And that's something I really like to put on the surface. Again, it gives a really nice texture and sort of wiggly lines when it's felted. To me, it just needed a little pop of colour, so I popped some yellow and some orange on the top. And again, pulled those edges around to the other side. A bit more silk on the other side. A nice bit of colour. And then some black linen fibre over the top. Another little pat and a rub with some soap. Again, you can see how important the blotting is there. It just makes it easier to remove the net if you blot it first. Things don't stick as much. Usually. Turn that over, pull those edges round. So I'm happy with that. It's a nice pattern, it's interesting. A little bit of fibre there, just pop on the top. Again, just work around those little edges, make sure everything's nice and tight on the template. The next part is the starting the felting process. So this is where you rub with some soap. Now we only want to rub in from the edge, into the middle. We don't want to rub off the template. So we're only rubbing in, pulling those edges in and nice and tight with the scratching net.
what this is doing is starting to, to seal the surface of the felt. Occasionally remove the net to make sure that those silk fibres and linen fibres aren't sticking through the net. Turn it over and do the same to the other side. A bit of soap and a rub. There's no time limit for this. It's really a matter of feeling and, and observing the felt to make sure that things are starting to stick together. Make sure those edges are nice and smooth. At this point, there's no shrinkage. It's just joining the fibres together. And what we're also trying to do is get the silk fibres and the linen fibres to stick onto the surface. You can see when you rub your finger that those linen fibres are following the finger that I'm push, putting on them. You really just want for those fibres to be stuck down. So you keep rubbing until they're stuck. Removing the net occasionally. You can see now when the finger's rubbed on it that the pattern's not moving, the fibres are stuck. That's a really good sign. And then once those fibres are stuck, you can go to the rolling phase. So what the rolling is doing, again, is felting the wool fibres together, but it also starts, things start to shrink. So what you'll notice is that's been rolled up in the bubble wrap, rolled backwards and forwards. And when it's unrolled, it will start, it will start to sort of curl upwards and that means that the wool is starting to shrink around the template. So you just keep looking, keep stretching the wool back out and flattening it out and turning it from in all directions. So you want it rolled from the four sides of the bubble wrap in the end. You can see it's turned into a fabric already. It's a solid piece of fabric just with that little bit of rolling. And you keep going and keep going until you get to the point that it's around about half the size of when it started. You can see all those fibres are well and truly attached. And now you can start, once those fibres are all attached, squeeze out a little bit of the excess water and you just roll it round and round and round in your hands with a little bit of soap. Keep the pressure on it. I don't throw my felt, a lot of felters do, I don't. I like to keep pressure on the felt as I'm working it. And you just keep rubbing it. Make it back into the circle shape, otherwise it could end up with a very odd shaped pod. If you're teaching someone to make a pod in the same way that I have, I would appreciate you acknowledging that you have uh, learnt with me. It's a really lovely thing to be respectful of all of our teachers. So the pods really, you can see it's starting to shrink. It's really, it's a magical process, it really is. And how all the fibres join together and yeah, it's quite, it's quite pretty. Okay, so we're just going to flatten that all out, make sure we're happy with it. We give the edges a bit of a rub. There's no seams or things that shouldn't be on those edges. You can feel the felt hardening up in your hands and that's there's two parts to the felting process. One's felting, the other is fulling, which is the shrinking and hardening. So that's getting nicely hardened. Now we're going to cut a little hole in the top. You just pull it up, make sure there's no template in the piece that you're going to cut off and cut in with your scissors. Sometimes I cut a little spiral in the top and I leave that attached. Uh, sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes at the end of felting I'll just snip it off but um, we'll give it a go. So just rubbing that cut edge, whenever you cut the felted edge you need to heal it. So you need to rub with your fingers and heal that edge. That's just taking the template out. You can see how much smaller it's getting. So with the heel of your hand and soap, you rub those cut edges and try and heal that wool back together. You want the wool fibres to be well joined. There's lots of rubbing. 
you want a really nice smooth edge. You do have to make sure that you don't do this process too soon. If you cut into the felt before it's hardened enough, you'll get lots of really furry, hairy edges, which is not so good. Okay, so I'm trying to just give that a little bit of shape with that, but I don't think it looks so good, so I'm going to snip it off. You can use that little piece for something else later and just harden up where you've cut. A little bit of stretching and just making it into a bit of a pot shape. Squeeze out the excess water. And keep felting. You're trying to get it hard enough that it will keep its own shape. So just hardening that felt is the most important thing at this point and getting it to shrink. And that way it really does hold its own shape. If you don't do the hardening process, you have a really floppy pod that doesn't hold. And you'll see the next part, which is exciting with the balloon. So you pop the balloon in and then you blow up the balloon. And when you blow up the balloon, you make sure it's got a big bulbous bit popping out the top. So you're overfilling the balloon with air. You really want a nice big knobby bit sticking out the top. That's it. And tie it off. You can just hold it. If you want to keep using the same balloon, you can just uh, hold it with your fingers. Well, I'm just going to be tying it off. And you can sort of shape it into a, a lower, flatter pod if you want or make it taller, really it's up to you. The felt will just kind of shape to the shape of the balloon, which is again one of the magic things about felt in three dimensions. It's just lovely. So you can see I'm pushing down quite hard on that knobby part and that makes it easy to rub the edges of the pot. It's really fun. You just shape it how you want it. Give a little rub in your hands. You can see how cute it looks already. And snip off the top. And at this point, you would rinse that, uh, rinse that pod and get the soapy water out. Pop the balloon back in and do the final shaping. And that's your pod. Lovely little thing that it is. You can also embellish the outside with beads. There's so many things that you can add on to your pods to make them look lovely. If you'd like to connect with me at the Felt Studio, you can either on Facebook or Instagram and also by email. Thank you for listening and enjoy your felt journey. I hope you enjoy watching me make a big mistake. <laughs> <laughs> we'll start again. Ah, too funny.